Now we have a candidate for the U.S. Senate in Utah, Evan McMullen. Thanks so much for coming on. Great to be with you, Brian. So you're running for the U.S. Senate in Utah as an independent. This is a pretty damn red seat. Why do you believe you can win not as a Republican? Well, I'm running against Mike Lee, who is a far right senator in Utah. Many have, have learned about him recently as, as he has uh, opposed uh, our last election or tried to overturn it been uh, exposed as having knowledge of, of uh, the administration's broader effort uh, in, on that front. Uh, and he's somebody who has to be replaced. I mean, he has to be replaced because uh, he is one of the most destructive members of the Senate um, for efforts to overturn our democracy, but, but certainly on other fronts, he's shut the government down uh, before and has threatened to do it again, uh, gets very, very little done, engages in tremendously divisive uh, politics and, and appeals to the extremes in our politics and just does a lot of damage and doesn't get a lot done for Utah. So um, so we've got to replace him and a majority of Utahns want to replace him. Uh, but the interesting thing about that is that that majority is divided into different factions. Those factions are, of course, Democrats, independents, and then uh, I would say principled or sensible Republicans who uh, also want to make a change. And so Traditionally, um, you you would um, you, you might challenge him, or I might, as a former Republican through the Republican primary. Um, but the reality is is that Republicans who want to replace Mike Lee, uh, they're somewhere between a third and maybe forty percent, just don't have the votes to get it done in the primary. Um, and so, in order to, to in order to replace him, we've got to mobilize this cross partisan coalition which again includes Republicans, Democrats, and independents. And the best way to do that in Utah is as an independent. Democrats are not competitive in statewide races, and unfortunately uh, for them in, in Utah, um, that I think you know, could change over time, uh, but for now that's the case. And so this majority that wants to replace Mike Lee, it's cross-partisan, and we have to run in such a way that we can unite those factions and achieve our goal. Regarding Mike Lee, I mean, you, you'd mentioned that he was divisive, that he is pushing the big lie that he knew about the efforts to overturn the election. In a lot of states for these Republican senators, that works. That's what Republican voters want to see from their elected officials. Why do you think Utah is different? You know, I, I think we just have a, a different expectation for our leaders in Utah. We, we expect them to do the right thing. You know, we expect people to do the right thing in their in their daily lives. It's, it's part of all, our culture. Now, certainly, there are plenty who have gotten on board with the big lie and, and with him, uh, but uh, again, a majority do not. Mike Lee is underwater in Utah. He's polling at 45% uh, support, and most of that is very, very soft. And so there's, there's a recognition that, that he hasn't served Utah well, and, uh, and because of that, you, you have this, this majority that wants to replace him, and, and you see a strong movement even among Republicans for that effort. Now, Republicans who want to replace Mike Lee are still in the minority, but they're, uh, they're you know, about a third of the party at least, which is significant enough uh, to, to get the job done with other Utahns in the general election. In terms of building this coalition that you would need to oust a sitting Republican senator in what is uh, largely a Republican state, you know, a lot of Democrats, by that token, a lot of Democrats feel like they shouldn't settle for someone who isn't promising bold progressive change, you know, that it's been status quo for so long and look where it's got us. What's your message to those on the left who may recognize the importance of getting Mike Lee out of office, but don't feel inspired to turn out by someone who isn't proposing a progressive agenda? Well, I would say a couple of things. First of all, I think that we have got to act quickly to, to protect our democratic republic. I think we're under tremendous risk right now. You see the far right advancing legislation in states around the country to make it more difficult for people to vote, um, putting more power in the hands of, of, uh, of far right partisans and legislatures, some of which now have uh, the authority to overturn elections. We'll see how that stands up in court if it comes to that. Um, but we, we have, we have a, a, an anti-democracy far right movement that is threatening our democracy. We saw that on January 6th. We, 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 we saw what happened in, you know, in the years before it leading up to that. We've seen things only get worse since then. 
And, and we have, there's a real risk that, that if, if the far right uh, comes to power uh, again, that it will uh, gut American democracy. And I, I think that's a clear and present danger to our country right now. So I think we've got it. First of all, we've got to put that first, the defense of our democracy. And for me, that includes ensuring people's voting rights, ensuring that we have fair competition, fighting back against gerrymandering, all of these things. And I think there's a tremendous amount of common ground between Republican refugees, independents and Democrats on that front. But I also think there's a lot of other common ground, too. I mean, look, in, in Utah right now, we're in a historic drought. Cities are trucking in water. Our reservoirs are empty. Um, we are in the middle also of, uh, of a, a period of, of especially terrible air quality. It's long been a problem, but it's only getting worse. So there's recognition that we need to do more to protect our air and water. And, and that's the way disaffected Republicans talk about it. On the left, uh, they talk about it as fighting back against climate change. Um, but there is tremendous common ground on that front and on many other issues. And so I, I, I think that, you know, the other thing I'll add is something very interesting happened in the Czech Republic in October. Um, they, they had a far right prime minister who kept defeating the pro-democracy movement. The pro-democracy movement included people on the center right to the center, to the center left, to the progressive side of politics. And they were divided and kept getting beaten by this guy and his movement. But finally, in October, they decided to unite and they were able to defeat this far right prime minister and protect their democracy. That is a model, I think, for us in America. It certainly is a model for us in 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 campaigning to, to replace Mike Lee. But I think it's a, a model for the rest of the country to defend our democracy. You brought up climate change. And I thought it was interesting because, you know, when we see climate change happen, it doesn't care if you're Republican or Democrat, it's still going to impact you. We see that with these extreme weather events like the tornado that just hit the state of Kentucky. It doesn't care if you're a red state or a blue state, it's still going to have a devastating impact on you. Where do you stand on a lot of these major issues on climate change, on health care, on reproductive rights and so on? Well, on climate change, uh, you, you know, uh, we've got serious problems in Utah. Like you know, you're pointing out other places. I mean, this this terrible you know tornado that that you know ripped through uh, uh, you know many of our communities and have destroyed lives and homes and businesses. We've got different problems in, in Utah, but but nevertheless, we've got serious problems that we need to confront. And 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 I think they're becoming so tangible now that we have an opportunity to build a cross-partisan coalition to, to, solve, to solve those problems. And for us in Utah, in the immediate term, it's got to mean better forest management across the West because forest fires, not only in our state, but in other states are, are making our air quality at times the worst in the world. It's shocking to say that, but it's true. Um, but it also, you know, on the water side in the immediate term, we've got to have more conservation efforts. But in the longer term, obviously, we've got to we've got to uh, cut back on carbon emissions, and we've got to find a way uh, to 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 achieve that. And I think that's through more investment in in clean technologies, but it's also through working with with our private sector uh, to encourage more conservation on that front too. And there are a bunch of ideas about how to do that, uh, and and I think increasing bipartisan support for that. So I'm I'm there. I want to be part of that solution. We need to be in Utah, um, so so that'll be something I work on. The other issues you mentioned on our democracy, for example, we've got to defend voting rights. I mean, I I believe that our you know that we are born inherently free and equal, and because of that, we need to have a government that's accountable to us, and that all begins with our ability to vote and for there to be free and fair elections in this country. And so, you know, I, I will vote, you know, I, I will probably be one of the most, um, you know, one of the strongest advocates in the Senate, if elected, uh, for uh, measures to protect our democracy. Obviously, we have a very thorny issue, uh, you know, right now uh, on reproductive rights and the fight between pro-life and pro-choice Americans. Uh, I would say that I believe there's tremendous common ground even on this issue and uh, politicians never talk about it. And we're tearing each other apart on this issue. And, and obviously it's a very important one and people have very deeply held views that come from their life experiences, um, their, their, you know, their moral positions, their, their religious backgrounds, all of that. But this is the common ground, Brian, I, that I see in our way forward. Our way forward is the reality 
that no one is, no one I know at least, is pro-abortion or pro-hurting women or children. I think there are people out there who care, who, who don't care enough about women, frankly, or children. But most of us care about women, care about children. No one is pro-abortion. That is tremendous common ground. And actually what a lot of people don't realize is that the abortion, abortion rates in America have been going down for decades. And they've been on the decline. Why? Because we've been doing more to help women and children. And so I think we, that's where we ought to focus. That addresses the underlying concern. Let's, inv let's invest in, in policies that are friendly to women, children, and families. That's, that's what's better for our country. It's better for women, better for children, better for families. Let's do that. That's what's working. Right now, we have a never-ending tug-of-war on the laws. You know, the, you know it's extremist laws being advanced by, uh, by you know, the extremes in our politics that, that want to turn Americans against each other and, uh, and, and you know, punish, punish women and, and I think do great harm to families and children. And I think you know, we will have that tug-of-war forever on the law unless we invest more sensibly on common ground in addressing the underlying with issue, which is that, you know, in many cases, women need help, children need help, families need help. Let's be there for them. Let's have a little less judgment and a lot more, you know, uh, and extend a helping hand. And we, we can move forward on this productively. I want to switch gears a little bit and uh, talk about your background. You obviously were uh, an officer in the CIA. What did that work include? Well, my main job in the agency was to recruit uh, foreign assets, as was the official word for it, but basically recruit people who would be spies for the U.S. government uh, against hostile nations and terrorist groups and organized criminals around the world. And so that's what I did. I was an undercover operative, which would meant that I had, you know, a cover you know, cover jobs and so cover it, did you, did you, so did you work at the, uh, like the state department or? Well, I'm not allowed. I did a very various things, but I'm not allowed to say what those things are. That's Got part it. of the, the deal I have with the agency is that I can say that I worked there and I can say what my job was and broadly what my job was, what it entailed. Uh, but I, I can't say what my cover jobs were because then people would know what the agency uses right. for their cover jobs, but it's a good question. But but uh, but I you know traveled uh, around the world and uh, and recruited uh, people to help us defeat Al Qaeda and to stand up to foreign authoritarian regimes who were uh, seeking to you know weaken free nations and attack free people around the world. Now, how is the ongoing issue of January sixth as a CIA officer influencing your campaign? I view the January 6th attack as a tragic event in American history that is on, on par with 9-11. Now, did, did people, as many people die in January 6th as did on, on, uh, on September 11th, 2001? No, not even close, of course. Um, but its political significance was that great. I mean, yeah. it, it was something that we never thought we would see in America, a violent effort a violent attempt to overturn our democracy. You know, we, um, you know, we have to take it seriously. Just like 9-11, if we don't hold those accountable for it, we will see it again. And I, I really believe it. We've got to hold those accountable. And I'm talking about people who were there, uh, who, who trespassed and who broke into the U.S. Capitol and, and who threatened to to hang our, our public officials, whether it's Mike Pence, I'm no fan of Mike Pence, but you know, people who threatened to hang him and, and Democratic and Republican members of Congress, they need to be held accountable. Uh, certainly members of Congress who aided and abetted this violent effort to overturn our election, they need to be held accountable too. And I'll point out that Mike Lee was a part of the effort to overturn the election. He was a part of it and he advised it, he defended it, and, uh, and then protected the insurrectionists after the fact. He was given the plan in a memo uh, before January 6th, and he kept it silent. He didn't go to the FBI, didn't go to the public. Here he is, a, con a so-called constitutional conservative. And when, when the barbarians were at the gate to overturn our democracy, when it really mattered, he was on the side of those who wanted to destroy our republic. And so that's a big, big deal. And, and so 
I just see the rise of extremism here in the United States following a similar pattern we, as, as what I've seen overseas. And, and we've got to stop it before it gets as bad as I've seen it elsewhere. It certainly is an ongoing threat to our democracy, Brian. I'll just say this, just, you know, and, you know lastly, in, in, in answering, answering your question, if we don't hold those accountable for what happened on January 6th, they will do it again. And it may not look exactly like January 6th, but they will, and I believe they are already finding ways to undermine and, and I think ultimately uh, 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 you know, dismantle our republic. And, and I think we've got to take it very seriously. I'll end with this, and this is building on exactly that. This is something I'm having trouble understanding. And that is that we watched Trump. We watched as a wannabe authoritarian tried to stage a coup on January 6th. We we know that he asked Georgia's Secretary of State for 11,780 votes, exactly one more vote than he actually got. And that was with the express purpose of anointing himself the winner of Georgia. We know he was coordinating uh, with lawmakers and people like Mike Lee uh, and state legislatures to send separate slates of electors uh, to Congress. We know that they had a PowerPoint with instructions to undermine the election. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm asking this not as a Democrat, but as someone with two eyes who can see anti-democratic overt corruption. But why has Trump faced no accountability? And as a former CIA officer, what should happen to him? Well, you know, I, I was a CIA officer, not not a, you know, a legal expert or, a, you know, a law enforcement officer. Those are those are, the, you know, we're different. But 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 I, I focus mostly on the political side of this. I mean, I look, I think if laws were broken, people have to be held, held accountable. We believe, I, I think, I hope, still in the rule of law in America, and and people need to be held accountable according to the law. Period. It, you know, impartially uh, uh, applied. Um, but I, I'm I'm more in the political realm. You know, holding people accountable in the political realm. And I'll I'll, I'll tell you, Brian, that I am a firm believer that that our democratic republic continues to be at risk. There are those who want to dismantle it. Those of us who are on the side of American democracy, we have to unite on that issue because all of the other issues that, that we care about, some of them we have a lot of common ground on, others are different, we have differences certainly. None of those issues will be resolved if we don't have a functioning democracy, if we don't have a democracy at all. And so that is why I'm such a big advocate of uniting the, the, you know, the, the disaffected Republicans, independents and Democrats into a majority coalition that can defend our republic and solve problems. And that's what we're doing in Utah. Mike Lee is unpopular. A majority of Utahns want to replace him. The Democrats don't have the votes on their own. The Republicans don't have the votes on their own. And the independents don't have the votes on their own. But together, they have a majority. And that is what we've got to do in this country. Yes, we're doing it in Utah. Um, but if we're going to save American democracy, it's going to be because Americans who are committed to our foundational ideals, to truth, to reason, to decency, just decided to put those things first and unite. And Brian, I think in the process of doing that, we're going to find, and, and I know this to be true, there's tremendous common ground between the disaffected right, you know, some of them still Republicans, and, and Democrats and independents, we can build this majority coalition, not only build it, but strengthen it and mobilize it to, to protect our democracy and then help solve all kinds of problems that the country's facing now. And that's what gets me excited. And, and that's the way we can hold these people who seek to destroy our republic accountable. We invite everyone to join us. The only way we can be successful is through uniting Republicans, Democrats, and independents to replace Mike Lee, defend our democratic republic and solve problems. And so I would encourage you know, everyone in your audience to, to come to our website, evanmcmullen.com and support us, join us, uh, donate to us if, if you're able, um, but we invite all to join this cause. Uh, Evan, uh, thank you so much for, for taking the time. I appreciate it. Thank you, Brian.